Hello, Miriam. How are you? I think you have to unmute yourself. Hi, Olivier. Hi. How are you? Good evening to you. Yeah. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for joining all the way from Cyprus. Yeah, it's good. Uh, good to be here. Great to have the launch. A new Great way of doing launch. this. It's a new way of doing this. Yes. Yeah. I, I can see a few people have joined already. Uh, hello, everyone. And thank you for joining us for this chat with, with Miriam McConnell as we launch Miriam's solo exhibition and displaced privilege. And the show is launching online first. Um, and Miriam will be coming to Dublin in early June and we'll install her show here at the gallery. And the show will be available at the gallery from the 11th of June onwards. And Miriam will be actually in the gallery on the 11th, the 12th, and the 13th of June. So you'll be able to meet the artists um, while looking at her exhibition as well. So again, Miriam, thanks a lot for joining. I hope everybody can hear us. Um, let us know if everything is good uh, sound wise. Um, we thought we would start this conversation by playing a film a, film, a beautiful film, actually. It's a two-minute film directed by Silvia Nicolaides and Nicholas Lordano. Um, it's a film uh, featuring Miriam and Miriam talking about her new body of work. And I think that would be a good way to start um, this conversation. Uh, so bear with me for a second. I'm going to share the video and Miriam and myself will disappear from the stream and we'll be back after two minutes after uh, we've played the film. So I'm just going to start preparing this now. And I'm just going to disappear from the stream with Miriam and will reappear later.
Miriam, I think I need to replay the film. There was no sound, so uh, let's replay it again, and no uh, we'll be back. Yeah. We'll be back in a second. All right. Okay. As a visual artist, I work closely with families who have been displaced uh, presently uh, in recent years and also families who have been displaced over time, decades ago. I use objects, um, personal objects, from refugees' migratory journey in the, the work. And these objects serve as like personal testimonies to their journey. And these visual stories highlight commonalities between the current restrictions due to the pandemic um, and the constant reality for those who are displaced around the world through conflict. By presenting things from a personal perspective, people's perceptions can change. That judgment can just become uh, less, less harsh, more understanding, uh, more empathy. And I think that comes with knowledge and the knowledge of someone's personal journey, I think brings things back home. My name is Miriam McConnell. I'm a visual artist. I was born in Ireland and I currently live in Paphos in Cyprus. My upcoming solo exhibition is called Displaced Privilege. Uh, it'll open at the Olivier Cornet Gallery in Dublin on the 23rd of May and it will run until the end of June 2021. Welcome back, Miriam. I, I hope everybody could hear the, the sound the second time round. Um, a beautiful, beautiful um, film. Um, um, Miriam, um, just to, it's your third solo exhibition with the Olivier Cornet Gallery since you joined back in 2017. And your previous exhibition, Domestic Resistance, was dealing with the female perspective of, of displacement, the need, the necessity to recreate a home. But it was more like the voice of women. And looking at this new body of work, it seems to me that you've given voices to children as well. Could you maybe tell us a bit more about how the work has evolved, so to speak, from the previous body of work to the current body of work? Yeah, so with the... The previous exhibition in 2019, or two, yeah, 2000, uh, would be, yeah, 2019 in May, uh, Domestic Resistance. Yeah, very much it was to de dealing with that kind of, um, uh, the story of the female um, displaced uh, and the quest to kind of find a safe house. So that idea also with the family, but that kind of, I suppose, the strength as well in that and uh, that journey. So it was very much looking at the objects of these uh, female um, displaced people who were uh, the objects that would uh, associate with where they'd left their home are uh, that kind of objects associated with starting a new life. But it was also um, not just um, women who were displaced uh, today or in recent years. It was also the story of women who were displaced over time. So it could have been 40 years ago, 30 years ago, and that idea that the narrative kind of repeats itself. Um, but then, yeah, I began to look a little bit 
uh, wider, you know, into a little bit of a wider scope with the idea of this placement. Um, and I began to look at the idea, talking to the women, and then often when I would meet women, uh, their children would be there, or they would show me images that their children had drawn. Or, so the, <clears throat> the kind of narrative became a little bit wider, a little bit more about the family. And um, so this body of work, yeah, just kind of organically grew that way. Uh, not really, um, I didn't really set out exactly to do it that way. But yes, the, the child's narrative seems to have come true quite clearly um, in paintings like No More Time for, for Lego Blocks or No More Time for Learning, uh, War Babies. It seems that this kind of narrative of what's lost in in a child's life and even a baby who may not remember a war, but it's it's that aftermath after. It's what's not possible. Um, uh, and they're not, it's not something that's kind of displaced, you know, it's gone, it's lost, it doesn't come back. Uh, so people just try and pick up the pieces. So when I began this series of work, I was looking at kind of, uh, you know, looking at the life of a non-refugee and then someone who is displaced or a refugee. Uh, and the idea then, as I was making the work, the pandemic, the COVID pandemic occurred. And then suddenly all these things that seem to be opposing narratives began to fuse into a much more common narrative. Uh, for example, the restrictions of movement, uh, you know, lack of access to medicine, or vaccines, these kind of things, um, lack of um, access to education, you know, was being to everybody. So even people who were in the so-called kind of privileged uh, part Part of society or the world we're also feeling these effects temporarily hopefully uh, but mm. the idea that there's this kind of empathy and just kind of we get to walk in the shoes of people who have this as their constant reality so that's how this body of work grew into it more about the home as well because all of us have been at home you know in lockdown mm. for you know different periods of time mm. Uh, we're going to go to those, some of those images, the objects that you've just mentioned. But before we do that, and it's actually a question that I never asked you before. Um, how did you start these dialogues with first women, you were saying, you know, your previous body of work and this time with the children? Is it through your work as a volunteer? I know that you volunteer quite yeah. a lot to yourself yeah. and your family. So is it how it, it happened, really, the start of those conversations? Yeah, some uh, some of it is uh, to the center, uh, through the center where me and my family volunteer, which is called the Learning Refuge. It's a center that um, assists children who have come as refugees here uh, with their learning. So basically homework, like homework groups, but they also learn uh, like the English language or they improve their Greek language and they do art and different things. I'm basically involved in helping them with their homework. That idea that, you know, through education, you can really forward yourself. It's a country, Cyprus, that there's equal opportunities for anyone. If you work, you can go to school and study uh, and the state pays for it. So, you know, it's a good starting point if you can you can get that for your children. Uh, that's part of it. But actually, really, in our lives here, I know just in terms of friends, uh, there's so many people we know who have been displaced. And it only, you know, you begin to put the stories together, um, you know, from either uh, maybe a friend of ours from Iran was displaced, but it, you're going back 40 years. Uh, Cyprus, again, over 40 years displaced in the conflict of 1974. Uh, of another friend who ha had to leave Egypt as well, um, again, back in history. Um, so you have this idea, and then more recent times, you, we have just within our community, in the school with my children, Loads of their friends have come from um, either Syria or they spent time in Jordan or Lebanon in refugee camps. And so they've made their way along different countries. And, uh, you know, displacement isn't one journey across the sea. You know, it often takes many years to get there. So, yeah, it's just kind of part of our life here. Uh, integration is is here. You know, people don't really live very separately. Once they're in the community, they're here. So, uh, yeah, it did a... I suppose that's it. The access to it is just easy. 
you know, our friends, a very close friend of mine here who's been here as long as I have, she came from Syria, but before the war. And so she um, has another perspective of it, but she can't ever go home. You know, she can't see her family, even though she didn't flee because of the war. So through, through her um, as well, I met lots and lots of other people as well. Mm, excellent. Uh, Miriam, I asked you um, before, obviously, this, this uh, live stream to choose three works um, so that you can basically maybe tell us a bit more about each of those. And so I'll show the images now and feel free to, uh, to talk yeah. about them. And if anybody, I'm sure people have been looking at the exhibition on the exhibition page or in the virtual space, if, if there's another work that anybody would like to know about, feel free to ask us uh, a question uh, in the form of comments on, on, on Facebook. And uh, we'll try, well, Miriam will try to, um, to answer as best as she can. So again, bear with me for a second. I hope this time it goes without a glitch. I'm just going to share my screen again, if I can. And let me know if you can see the first uh, image, which is a Cypriot story of displacement. It's an oil on wood. Um, can you see it, Miriam? And I hope everybody yes. can see it. <clears throat> so um, this uh, this image has come. I, I thought the it would be. A, I had this idea. I worked on it for quite a long time before I got it to kind of come the way that I wanted it to come was the idea of you know over time how um through history and in so many nations and cultures around the world uh, stories are woven uh, about the culture or the times we live in into kind of domestic elements whether it be a weave or we go to an archaeological museum and it's along on the pottery you know of battles or maybe more domestic scenes of how people lived at that time so this idea of lace which is very apparent uh, in Cyprus the traditional still uh, very much alive this traditional lace making so uh, one of the women that I had worked with here and kind of informally interviewed she showed me lots of uh, beautiful objects from her journey as a refugee from the north of Cyprus to um, Paphos in the conflict of 1974. Uh, she had showed me lots and lots of different objects. So with this image, I took the patterns from objects. So the objects could be, some of them were lace themselves, some were jewellery, some were on ceramic plates, um, and uh, one was a bracelet. And so I used the pattern to incorporate the patterns of those objects into uh, this idea that it's a lace curtain. So that, uh, you know, there's this kind of permanent evidence of her her kind of testimony of, of displacement and, you know, kind of survival as well. It's very hopeful, you know, this idea that you've, you've been through this and you've come through it. But it's very personal um, as well. So it's kind of nice that it's subtle. Uh, I know what all the components are, as would she. But when you look at it, it's still this kind of piece of lace, you know. So it has this kind of public appeal, but this kind of personal appeal as well. And then, then I, there's a similar work called The Syrian Story, which is a Syrian, um, like a weave. And uh, it's also that idea that these conflicts were decades apart, but the, you know, the story, especially this kind of female side of it, just seems to repeat itself. And maybe we don't we don't always view the women the same way. You know, someone who's come through it decades ago, sometimes we view them different to somebody who's trying to grapple with it today, finding it difficult. Mm. I, I, must say, I haven't seen this piece yet, and I haven't seen any of these pieces yet in the flesh. And I, I just can't wait to see that one in particular, I must admit. And I just can't wait uh, for you to arrive at the gallery and uh, install the exhibition with oh, yeah. myself in early June. Um, uh, I'm going to move to um, to the next uh, picture that you chose to um, to talk about. Um, no time for learning. It's an oil on canvas, and it's 46 by 40 centimeters. Yeah. So this this painting, yeah, it's quite small. It's nice. It's an intimate scene. It began as a bigger painting with lots of desks 
on a bigger scale and then I scaled it right down so I made it much smaller so you've just faced with this one single school desk and um, this uh, you know a lot of people around the world pretty much everybody has this idea of homeschooling and that learning has been interrupted due to the the COVID pandemic and uh, it's something that I was looking at anyway before the pandemic as how displaced children around the world their education is very much interrupted there's some children that uh, you know we're friends or work with here and they lost years of education and they won't get it back they just have to try and kind of just catch up as best they can so um you know, there's opportunities there to come through it. Um, and there's an, also an example already of people who've come through it, and we all will too. Um, this uh, painting is obviously the school desk. And then at the back, I wanted to place like, almost like, you know, the blackboard, the green board with the chalk at the back. And the drawing, which is repeated at the back on the blackboard is, a child's drawing it's the child of a friend of ours here and it was just a, a drawing that the mother had showed me and allowed me to photograph and it was her, her, just a drawing of home you know a house it's an imaginary beautiful house with uh, swings and children playing on the swings and it just seemed to encompass so much of what everybody in the world was missing you know during this time so it was this nice parallel between you know what what everybody can't wait to get back to and for some families it'll be longer uh, if they've been displaced it's not due to the pandemic that they can't get be back at home or back in the school room mm. oh, it's a beautiful piece I, I just love the way you've rendered the table and 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 the chair there again i just can't wait to see uh that work um moving on to the third um picture that you chose um medicine mask medicine bottles number yeah. three it's a non on canvas and again it's a it's an intimate piece i know that you've uh, painted a much larger piece on the same theme but this yeah. one is 35 by 35. yes it's it's very small life size really uh, these are uh, two medicine bottles uh, I, I like the way it was a larger painting which I've decided I decided to make a lot smaller so there was more medicine bottles in it and I decided to to really crop it down to make it just two so immediately kind of echoes that idea of the social distancing and um, you know those posters we keep seeing everywhere with two people two meters apart this distance and um, the idea of uh, I in I started to wrap lots. I have loads of medicine bottles. I work with this idea anyway. I've had it as a theme for years. So I decided to wrap them in the studio. I collect lots of objects, and so I started to wrap them with my used masks. And then I thought this is really interesting image. You know, this idea of kind of concealing the medicine or wrapping it or protecting it, or uh, so it, it kind of the piece itself. It can be communicated or. Um, interpreted in lots of different ways but really for me it, it's based around again this idea of what we're all experiencing that we this kind of lack of access to either the vaccine which has been chased for the last a year and a half or, or just basic medical um, care that we needed during the pandemic either due to the rise in in cases that some countries couldn't cope or just purely the part of the world it was that they had couldn't cope or at the beginning where the medicine wasn't available um, and that uh, that kind of idea that you know it isn't just there for us you know we don't get sick and there's a medicine to to clear it and that reality is the case for quite a lot of families that have been displaced that I know that you know people have lost their children from something that they shouldn't ordinarily have died from, you know, so that access to, for, you know, to medicine for the more privileged world is something that was in question probably for the first time in a while, you know. So again, it just juxtaposes that kind of commonality that people had to kind of um, live the, a similar, you know, reality that people live when, when those things aren't available. Mm. 
I remember having this conversation with you months ago about masks, you know, and at the time I was wondering what are we going to do with all those masks that are left behind? And yes. so um, I remember that conversation to see this painting now reminds me uh, of that conversation that you and me had about masks and how artists would possibly use references to those or even use yeah. them as objects. And so it's a, it's a very interesting way of and, dealing with and them. They're quite, uh, beautiful, aren't they? Aesthetically, they're quite interesting to look at. Mm. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and also I like the idea that they are, they're tied, you know, they're bound, you know, there's this kind of string on them as well. Uh, I, I love the work of Christo and Jean-Claude. So that idea of the wrapping, for all my career, really, I've looked at their work and and lots of other artists like Yves Klein, also that has, you know, that idea of the concealing to make visible and and so on. Uh, it's very interesting. Yeah, it's good. Mm -hmm. We're getting a lot of comments from people. Alan Keane, for instance, my magnificent work, Miriam. Congrats. Uh, Liz Matthews, your work is so poignant. Uh, is there a series of the mask medicine bottles? So that's the first question that we're getting. Is there a series as such? Um, yes, there's, this is a very small painting. And then there's uh, two very large drawings as well. They're a meter and a half by two meters. So that's, that's but yeah, it's, it, it's something that's continuing uh, in, in the work. And now that I'm doing as well, the idea of the mask as well. It's it's a nice object to work with. You can mm. manipulate. That's the one we can see in the film, right, Miriam? Yes. There's a yeah. huge one behind you. Yes, yeah, that's Thank the one. Um, thanks, Liz, for the question. Uh, Owen McLaughlin, uh, hi, Miriam. Uh, is very inspiring and heartening. I just wondered about the Syrian carpet picture. You show only half the carpet. Was this deliberate, perhaps, to show the upset of the normal life. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to that um, image. Uh, here it is. I hope everybody can see it. Hi, hi, Owen. Thanks for the question. Uh, looking forward to seeing you hopefully in Ireland. Um, the yeah, this is the city. So it's kind of the the little partner painting for the Cypriot um, story of displacement. Yeah, this is, so both paintings, as I was saying earlier, incorporated objects that each woman had showed me. So it's a, it's a, a design from a Syrian weave, so like a carpet, but I, I've changed it and placed in, in the place of the flowers and different things. I've placed the objects, but they resemble. So you don't really notice at the beginning. And the border around the side is a, a, an infant baby bracelet from uh, the woman's child who was born in a refugee camp in the Lebanon. And it, it, that's the kind of long slender thing that you can see all the way around. Um, then there's uh, the pattern of a, a a one dollar note that had a kind of a story to it as well and part of the woman's journey to get to cyprus as well and then some of them are patterns from other objects she showed me and um, the idea of cropping it yeah i wanted it to to not fill the whole canvas i did it with the the lace as well the cypriot one is so you do see it as an object so it has a background, so it's not complete. It doesn't reach the edge of the canvas. So even though it's a weave or a carpet, that it's still an object in an environment. So it still has this kind of backdrop. So I thought that's quite important as well. I like that there are these um, quite strong domestic images as well that perhaps are not given that kind of title of, you know, being art, uh, but yet they're, they, you know, we live with them, and sometimes, especially the the Syrian and the Persian carpets, they have like generations. Some of them have stories of, you know, people's families interwoven into them. You know, they have their heritage and culture into them. It's quite nice, and the Irish lace the same. You know, it's a it's a really nice subject. Mm. Uh, for me, if I may, I'm going to choose a painting that I'd like you to tell us a bit more, simply because my personally my favorite toy as a kid was Lego. Uh, in my whole childhood, you know, I built things with Legos and all my imagination. It all comes from that. It's such a universal, I think, game. So I'm just going to show that uh, this um, image. There's two paintings in in the exhibition. There's this one. Um, um, but this is the one that I've chosen for you maybe to talk a bit more about it, um, if you may. Yeah. 
So, yeah, I, I really wanted to, like we were saying earlier, to look at the kind of narrative of, of the a child's narrative of being displaced. So, you know, one part of displacement, if it's true conflict, is the memory of, of war or, or of leaving that place. And the other part of the journey is to arrive somewhere and have to build, you know, rebuild again. So they're, you know, they're both uh, opposing components, really, leaving and then staying. So this idea, again, uh, myself, I love Lego and have had years and years, thankfully, with my children making it. And it's such a wonderful, um, this kind of symbol of creativity. Uh, you can build it and break it and build it again. And so I thought it was perfect to put in this. It's very modern as well, these kind of colors in this much older, uh, you know, really derelict kind of bombed out space. Um, and I like the idea of the bricks. They were actually in the area at the back that they echoed this idea of the bricks at the front. So, uh, yeah, that's the idea of that is that I suppose the uh, child's resilience to continue and keep going in the face of conflict, just to keep building. That's it. To keep building. Yes, yes. Yeah, One thing that, that you, you oh, uh, we got another question here. Uh, what does the lace pattern mean to you, Miriam? The lace pattern. The, the lace um, the lace pattern is um, it's taken from I created the lace pattern from uh, the, the design or the pattern of objects that a, a Cypriot woman had showed me from her journey of displacement in 1974. So the pattern looks like lace, but it's actually little elements of her story. So either the pattern of ceramic plates that had particular meaning for her are uh, wedding rings, uh, pendants, and um, different things that she showed me that were her journey from uh, from displacement in 1974. Mm. When we were preparing for this uh, exhibition, you mentioned something to me and I was sort of telling you, um, you know, the, the sort of the difference or the evolution, if you like, from the previous body of work, the female perspective on displacement to this current body of work. And uh, at the time I was telling you about those images, you know, that we saw recently on television, you know, those boys and teenagers, you know, swimming all the way to Morocco. There's been shocking images um, a couple of days ago in Ceuta, you know, the Spanish enclave in Morocco. And you said something quite interesting for me, to me regarding, again, the evolution of your work from sort of the female perspective to sort of the more family. And that your next or your current interest as well is the teenagers, the boy, the boy teenagers, yeah. the, the male teenagers. Could you tell me a bit and everybody else about that? Because to me, that was really interesting. Yeah, the next, uh, the kind of next project I've begun to organize to meet with uh, the young male displaced. So this idea of, um, you know, uh, somebody who uh, in lots of countries, they're often the person they're very visible here where we live because they're walking as well uh, in a country where people mainly use cars. So you have peoples from North Africa are from Syria and around the Middle East. And um, they're, they're here, they've come had a really tough journey and uh, they're, they're trying to get by and they're really willing to work. You know, they're, they're going to get on. Okay. But they're, they're often a figure in society that um, people fear, you know, and it's, um, it's it's without reason almost all of the time. And I find that story is very interesting and very, very important that uh, those kind of voices get heard and that it's presented to people to see kind of a much rounder view of their journey and their life and where they're going, you know, and how they feel about things. So that's, that's my next series is to look at these kind of young males. Often they're alone. They're somebody's son, you know, anyone who has children at some stage, their sons will be young males or are already. And to try and make it, many Irish have done it, uh, where they fear it on the streets, where they, you know, it, it comes back home, isn't it? It just keeps repeating itself. And it's tough for them because uh, they don't maybe get the empathy of a woman and a child. Um, in, it's not in the same way. You know. People judge them very, very quickly. They're judged very quickly. Mm -hmm. 
So that's yeah. be interesting to see what they're, because I will do it through objects also. So what things uh, project for them, they're part of the story. You know, there's no way of predicting it. It's what mm. their story is. You've just mentioned the word objects and there's one other piece in the show and again it's going to be really interesting to uh, to install it uh, with you which is a 3D piece and I'd like maybe to finish this uh, conversation by uh, just showing um, an image of it. I think it's the first. I'm actually what I'm doing at the moment I'm going through all the images on the exhibition page so uh, if some of you do not want to see the exhibition in the virtual space. You can also look at the images here on the exhibition page. Um, this is a wall installation. And again, I can't wait to install that with you. Uh, envelope homes uh, uh, made uh, from collected envelopes. And it's quite large. It's one meter um, by two meters in width. So um, that looks like a brilliant piece, Miriam. And again, I just can't wait to, to install it. Could you just maybe say a few words about this piece? Yes, um, I began uh, this piece actually in uh, the April of 2020. So really the very beginning of the lockdown, I began to make these envelope homes. I had done a much larger installation in 2017, which was called the House of Letters, mm -hmm. which I collected uh, thousands really of letters in different languages from around the world. And I built this very similar to that shape of this kind of universal symbol of home. So this kind of triangle roof and the square body um, is recognizable to anybody as that idea of a house or a home. So I thought I had lots of envelopes that I had collected the, the letters. So I love this idea that, um, you know, looking at restriction of movement, and then you look at the idea of an envelope that passes and uh, borders easily. And uh, so that's, kind of slip, you know, came in nice and easily into the idea of uh, the envelope would become the home. Uh, I really like the idea of taking an, one object and employing it as another object, you know, so kind of making it look like something else. So the envelope becomes a home or a baby bracelet looks like a tank, etc. So I thought if I laid them out in this kind of series that they are almost like a camp, you know, like where people are displayed mm -hmm. temporarily. So that's the idea of them as well. And so it relates to the idea of displacement, but it also relates to the idea of the lockdown for people around the world, that idea that we were all so restricted in our, in our homes. And for some of us, you know, it was a safe house and a nice place to be able to relax. And for others, not so much, for lots of other different reasons. So it's just to kind of get that, that you know, that story and discussion around that out there, really. Mm. Well, um, I really would like to congratulate you on, on this body of work. I think you're, you're offering a, a very different perspective on the lockdown, even seen from our own eyes. And I just can't wait to see this exhibition in Dublin. So just to tell everybody that, the show is available at the moment online until Miriam comes to Dublin, hopefully in early June. And, yeah. and we'll be installing the exhibition in early June and the show will be available to the public from the 11th of June. And you'll get a chance to meet with Miriam as well if you're around Dublin those three days. And the show will run until at least the end, the end of June. So um, I don't know if we have any more questions, but... Um, I'd like to really thank everybody for, for attending um, today. And again, I just can't wait to show this, this beautiful body of work in, in, in Dublin sometime soon. Yeah, and I'd like to thank you very much, Olivier, for all your support uh, during all this couple of years, because it's two years body of work. It's, uh, it's, been, you know, it's been a tough time for lots of reasons, and uh, it's been so great to have. Uh, the, to know that the support is always there and the excitement over new work and ideas it's it's just wonderful it makes it all uh, worthwhile you know making work and sharing it and thanks to everybody for for joining today it was great great way to launch the show mm. and before we finish actually you were interviewed very recently uh, uh, by uh, the uh, Dublin Inquirer, and we've posted that interview. If 
if people want to see um, the exhibition page, we have all the coverage for this show and uh, there's a link to this article as well. And it's very well written. Um, and I recommend everyone to have a look at it again. Early on today, I went live and I showed the, how to navigate through the space. So uh, you are more than welcome to have a look at your exhibition in the 3D virtual space. But of course, we really, really want you to visit the gallery uh, when the show is up and running here in Dublin from the 11th of June. So again, um, I'd like to thank everyone for, um, for attending uh, today spread the news and I'm looking at lots of very positive um, uh, comments there for you Miriam so um, I think I've enjoyed listening to you so and, uh, uh, for, for people to visit the gallery they will have to book an appointment is that uh, yes so that's the way you're right to mention that that's the way that the gallery has been operating since the start of the pandemic and I think Public museums are doing that as well through a ticketing system. We don't have a ticketing system, but all that people have to do is really email me or give me a call, text me, just to let me know what time you'd like to come at. And then you're ensured that you know, you'll know you be on your own in the gallery and you can spend as much time as you want. And yeah, uh, and yeah so that's that's the way we've right. been operating for, uh, for everybody's sake, really, you know? So, yeah. yeah. That's great. I look forward to seeing people at the show. It'll be great. Exactly. Yes. So again, thanks everyone. And um, have a nice evening and stay safe. And again, see you at the Olivier Corne Gallery with Miriam McConnell's work uh, from Midgen onward. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening in tonight, Thank for you, joining Miriam. in tonight. Thanks, Miriam. Thank you so much. And congratulations. Thank you, Thank you very much. For this very strong body of work. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.